So good day. Here we are again at the Cancer Support Community, and I am Jessica Lewis. I am a lifestyle coach. That's a fancy way I like to describe my work, uh, which is basically wearing three different hats. I'm a personal trainer, a certified nutritional counselor, and an accredited Tai Chi Cha instructor. And I founded a little company called Sculpt Your Life uh, about 18-ish years ago. Uh, if you want to learn more about me and the way I do my work, spoiler alert, I have like a three-legged stool principle of how you can train your health and well-being, right? Just Google me, <laughs> Jessica Lewis, sculpt your life, spell it any way you want. In Delaware, you know, there's a couple different ways to spell Lewis. Uh, or if you want to go look for my website, I did kind of play around with the spelling of the domain because frankly when I went to buy the one I wanted 18-ish years ago the one I wanted was taken <laughs> so I, I spell it www.sculpt that's spelled just the way you think it would be spelled your you are instead of y-o-u-r l-i-f-e dot com but again if you just google any combination of Jessica Lewis and sculpt your life I'm going to pop right up I've been told I'm uh, my SEO is very good apparently so, and the reason why we're here week after week, we're still currently uh, about every other week here, but we're looking to go weekly sometime soon, is because I'm going to teach you Tai Chi Cha, which is the third leg of the stool. <laughs> and here's why. I think it's so important for everyone to embrace some meditation style that really speaks to them. For me, Tai Chi Cha is the one I love best, although I am a certified to teach a lot of them. Uh, here's why. You know, it's been my experience both personally and working with about umpteen clients that you can exercise exactly the way I tell you to, and you can eat right until you turn blue in the face. But if you are stressed out, or if you have, worse yet, traumas that are unaddressed in the back of your mind, uh, at some point, you're going to have to kiss your health goodbye. That is just a fact. So even though I always tell people, you know, it's like we're sitting on a three-legged stool. I really actually, frankly, do think that the relaxation leg is more important than the other two. <laughs> but that's just my humble opinion. M-H-O, right? As we say. So today we're going to do a little Tai Chi Cha. And what I love about what's going on here today is... They just really beautified their garden. So we didn't have this gorgeous Monet bench before. And we didn't have all these beautiful mums. We didn't have this beautiful backdrop. So I figured today I'd do a little bit of both seated and standing with very, very, very little modification. All the Tai Chi Cha moves, there's only 20, can be done from a seated position. And it's the, by far the most adaptive form of Tai Chi out there, bar none take my word for it. It really is true. In fact, I've even worked with people who were paralyzed from here down, so they couldn't even do the seated movements, much less the standing ones. And uh, I've had great success in working with people who simply visualize themselves doing the movement. Anyway, I digress. So let's get started with the practice today. Uh, I have my singing bowl here with me, as I do week after week. I like to open and close my Tai Chi Cha practice with a few minutes of more traditional mindfulness. I think if for no other reason than, you know what, we live in a busy culture. We rush, rush, rush around from place to place, including me. You know, I'm a, I'm a contractor, so I, I go from class to class to client to client to place to place all day long. And it's not always easy to just like arrive and be 100% here, right? 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 <laughs> So I do like to use a little bit of good old-fashioned mindfulness, both at the end, at the beginning and the end of my practice, first to help me sort of really be here 100%, and then also as sort of a little bit of a gauge to see how relaxed I actually got during my practice. So let's all, let's all do that together, okay? If you're standing, that's fine. Go ahead and put your feet in sort of a comfortable... V shape. If my hands were my feet and I could pick them up and show them to you easily and I were standing, you'd see that I'm talking about a shape like this. Some, some way in which your heels are a little bit closer than your toes. 
Let your knees be a little bit soft. And once you do that, you'll probably realize that your weight is suddenly spread all the way out to the absolute outer margins of your feet. That's important. How are you going to really feel your feet touching the ground if you really can't feel your weight spreading out to the very edges of your feet, right? And then you see how I'm sitting here with my hands on my thighs? Right, my hands are horizontal right now. So if you're standing, again, just let your arms hang straight down. You know, that's easy, right? And then just lift the fingers. So that is as if you're resting your palms and fingers on something nice and firm and horizontal, like you would be if you were sitting here with your hands on your legs, okay? If you're, seated, if you're sitting with me, along with me, just do what I'm doing. But just move a little bit uh, forward away from the back of your chair so you're in charge of your own spine. And you sort of pretend your head is a half-empty balloon and the spine is a sort of like the string hanging down, right? And then feel your sit bones touching your chair. Feel your hands resting on your thighs. Right. And let's all of us, no matter what position we're in, pick a spot maybe somewhere south of the belly button to focus on, focus our mind's eye on, focus our attention on. We're going to, as the Buddhists say, call the bell. It's a fancy way of saying, I'm going to ring it. <laughs> Three times, actually. And until I call you back with another set of three bells, your whole job is just to focus on this spot you've chosen. Just notice it. Notice all the aspects of it you can notice. You know, what are the feelings there? What are the sensations? What are the thoughts that may run through your mind while you're feeling those things? And by the way, if thoughts do occur, because that's what minds do, just say thank you for sharing and redirect them down to whatever place it is that you chose. Okay? There's no wrong way to do this. It's all good and it just keeps getting gooder. Okay? You ready? All right, let's go. Welcome back, in case you went anywhere. <laughs> okay, now some of the movements don't translate real well to being seated when you're sitting on a bench like this, because this gets in the way. The first movement, actually, is probably not best done in uh, a place like this. Uh, you're probably better off if you're sitting in a chair that has no arms, okay? But so I'll just show you some of the movements of standing and some seated. I'm going to start with rocking motion. I'm going to try to go through the whole series. I may do a few less of each movement so that we hopefully will fit the whole set of 20 movements in. Um, now maybe I'll do them in order today. Sometimes I don't, but today maybe I will. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start with rocking motion. And I'm going to start sideways. Okay. So, so here we are in that rest position I described when we were first beginning our practice, right? Can you see my feet are sort of in a V? And my palms are sort of resting on a little, you know, pocket of invisible energy there, right? And here's what it looks like from the side. Here's me when my uh, weight is not evenly distributed in both my feet. Actually, uh, 
my knees are kind of locked in the back. This is normal, actually, the way I stand when, when I'm not really thinking about it. But now when we start Tai Chi Cha, we really want the knees to be just a little bit soft, kind of like the way the elbows get a little soft when you're resting your palms here. And this is really the best way for you to feel your weight spreading all the way out to the outer edges of your feet. Okay. So um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and begin the movement. We want to step out with your left leg. And we always say the best way to do Tai Chi Cha is with the effort of no effort. So we always minimize effort, right? So the easiest way to let your left leg move out there to the left is just sort of shift slightly away from it and it will almost move out there by itself. I'm negotiating with a stone here. There we go. Now I found my spot. And now you're going to let your weight sort of flow to the rear of you. All you got to do is sort of lengthen your knees and put your hands back here. And now we're just going to let it flow forward. Here we go. And you can see how if I was sitting on the bench, my hands wouldn't be able to make the full motion here. The bottom part of the bench would stop them. This is called rocking motion. And one of the other ways to really use the effort of no effort is just ask your body to do some semblance of what you're watching me do. And that is more than good enough Tai Chi Cha. There's no such thing as bad Tai Chi Cha. It's all good. And it gets gooder and gooder and gooder over time. Research shows we only need about 15 minutes of this stuff a day to actually learn to be well. I'm really not kidding. Amazing, huh? Why don't we do three more of these? We usually don't do more than nine. But I'm having fun. Two. And on the third one, you're just going to sort of head back the direction you came and feel your body resting. Just notice the sensations in your body when you're not moving for a few moments. And then we move. We go forward and do another movement, right? So we're going to do bird flaps and swings. I'm going to do one set of the three standing, and then I'll do the other two seated. Here we go. We're just going to sink down and a little bit forward and back. And the teeny weeny little bird wings are going to flap their wings here. Not a big gesture. Here comes a little circle at the end. And here I am seated and doing it. We're just going to let the pelvis kind of roll forward and back. It sort of simulates the dropping and moving forward that we did when we were standing. Circle. Let's do that again. And flow back to rest. Take a moment to feel your body not moving before you move again. So what you just saw me doing when I was seated is you probably saw my pelvis kind of tip forward and then tip back. If you think about the pelvis sort of like a bowl, tipping forward and tipping back. But the upper body just sort of sits on top of the pelvis and just sort of rolls forward a little bit and then just sort of rolls back. There was no need for me to even lean forward or back, right? Because that would be more... When you're standing, the same thing is happening, really. It's just the movement pattern is a little bit bigger. That's all. So let's do uh, the next movement around the platter, um, seated, the first half, and then I'll do the second half standing, okay? So we're going to begin with the left foot out ever so slightly, just a little bit when you're seated. It's mostly a metaphor. And there's a big round platter out in front of your heart, basically. It's about the size of what you can hold with your hands. You're going to put your hands on the back of the platter. And then as the pelvis kind of spills forward, there go the hands. 
And as it kind of tips back up, they come back. I'll do six of these instead of nine. One more. And flow back to rest. And let's do the other half, me standing. Okay? Here we are, resting. This time we want to put your other foot out, your right foot. Okay? The easiest way to get that foot out there. Just sink down a little bit lower, shift all the way into your left leg. And then when this right leg is completely empty, you should be able to just extend the knee without any effort. And the heel will just drop down wherever it wants to drop, depending on your height and the length of your leg, etc. Okay, here's the platter again. Good. As we flow all the weight out of this leg into this leg, the hands are going to flow out over the leg that's sticking out there. In this case, right now, it's the right one. And back. Nice. I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. This is the same movement pattern we did in the chair, only it's just bigger. The pelvis is still sort of spilling its contents out in the front and then tipping back up as it moves back. And we're going to call this next one number six. And then to end it, you just stand up on that rear foot and let the body rest again. Nice. All right, let's do a uh, round the platter variation. I'll do the first one standing, since I'm already up. And it begins the same, only just in front of the shoulder, on the same side of the body as whichever leg is sticking out. In this case, it's my left. The fingers just lift. As if there's suddenly like a ball of energy between them, and you just sort of show the ball the front edge of the platter. And it falls off by itself. And here's one more. And here's the seated version. I'm going to place that right foot out there ever so slightly. And the same movement pattern, just a little smaller. Nice. And back to the soles of the feet we go. And the bones of the seat. <laughs> We're just feeling them touch the chair. If you're standing, see if you can let your thoughts simply dwell on the soles of your feet, kissing the earth while we sit here and rest for a moment or two. Now let's do bass drum, okay? I'm going to place my left foot out ever so slightly. When you're seated, it's more like bass tambourine. <laughs> like I said, it's the same movement pattern, just a little smaller. Hands come up to about um, chest height, and they're about shoulder width apart, right? And then as you let your pelvis kind of spill forward, the hands roll out. As it kind of tips back up, they roll back. Nice.
Let your hands and arms get so relaxed. The elbows just sort of hang down almost the whole time. Let's do one more. And flow back to rest for a moment. I'm going to do the other half standing. Good. Letting the right foot flow out there as easily as possible now. And here we go. When you're standing, you can really see the bass drum is about the same size as the bass drum in a high school marching band, right? And let your hands and fingers get so relaxed that gravity starts to make your fingers sort of tip down there at the bottom and kind of flip back up again. Last one. Soles of the feet. Feel them touching the earth. Let's do a movement called um, Daughter on the Mountaintop. I'll do the first half standing since I'm standing. We're going to sink down and shift over to the right so that the left leg can extend effortlessly and just turn the palms over. And then as we flow forward, the hands flow up as if they're about to clap, and then they just sort of, yeah, they just miss each other and fall. Here I'll face you so you can see. I'm actually sort of drawing two overlapping circles in the air here. Can you see it? One more. And rest. Nice. Here, I'll do the other side facing you. Placing the right foot out ever so slightly now, just turning the palms over. And again, the circles just get a little smaller. That's all. If you want to get real precise about it, no matter which foot you have sticking out, when the hands miss the clap at the top, the left hand is always the one that's closer to the body. But you know, especially in the age of Zoom, if you get your lefts and rights confused during this practice, oh well, so what? There's no such thing as Tai Chi Cha police. It's all good. Let's do one more. And rest. Now, in the last movement, you probably noticed it was almost like I was unzipping my jacket, right? So this next movement is sort of like a complementary move to Daughter on the Mountaintop. It's called Daughter in the Valley. And you'll notice it's more like I'm zipping it back up again. I mean, you'll see it. I'll face you for the first half as I stay seated. Just place your left foot out ever so slightly and let your hands come up to about where they were for bass drum, only facing out. Okay, so as you let your pelvis kind of spill forward, the hands come together and rise. And as it rolls back, they come back down again to where they started. Can you see that sort of zipping back up gesture? Last one. And rest a bit. Just feel the sensations of the body not moving. And then we move. So I'll do the second half standing. Good. And here we go, placing the right foot out now. You know, you might notice that in every single Tai Chi Chun move, the hand is in what we call this open position. You know how you figure out what it feels like or looks like? Just put your hands around your own face. Isn't that the way you touch the face of someone you love, right? Right? And then just move your hands away. And look, they're in this sort of like 
slight cock of the wrist position, right? When we did um, daughter on the mountaintop, they were like that at the top. So rather than swords, they were like that. And when we do daughter in the valley, same thing, right? When we are around the platter, same thing. Bass drum, same thing. So here we go. This is daughter on in the valley with your right foot out. The reason why we have that open palm position is because that's one way for the energy to flow more efficiently up and down the big old meridians in your arms. Think of it as like a garden hose that is wide open at the end. One more. And rest. Nice. Now we're going to do a side to side movement. I'll do the first um, couple standing and then I'll sit. Okay. So you probably noticed that the primary principles of movement in all the months we've done so far are softness, smoothness, continuity, or you could say circularity or continuousness, right? Sort of expansion, contraction, that's what's going on in your pelvis, right? Flowing from the center, right? So all the principles of movement are exactly the same when we do side-to-side -side movements, only it's just a different plane of action. Instead of going this way, we go this way, all right? So here's how we're going to do carry the ball to the side standing, all right? We're just going to sink down a little bit lower, and we're going to shift all the weight into the right leg, like you'd normally expect. But then we're going to turn the entire body from the pelvis to the shoulders. It's like we're going to rotate the whole thing like a column. So that you probably notice your belly button is facing off to the right now and your right shoulder just went back. Right? So just put your right hand up like you're going to wave at me and cover it with your left hand. Oops, I have an itch. It's the same little ball of energy you have when you were doing around the platter variation. And you probably also notice your left leg is very empty now. So just let it sneak out to the side. I'm negotiating with some um, pavers here. <laughs> right, and of course we're going to let all the weight flow from this full leg into this empty leg. So here we go. It's just going to pull the hands along for the ride. And back again. We call this carry the ball to the side, but I really think it should be called carry the ball to the side and back. And normally we do three rotations and then we step, three rotations and step, three rotations and step. But because I have limited space here, I'm just going to do nine rotations continuously. I'm going to slow down, too. I think this is six. <sighs> we'll call it seven. Eight. And on the last one, you just stand up on the leg that's filling up. In this case, it's my left. And rest. Right? So seated is just the same, only it's smaller. That's it. So I'm going to turn my whole body from like my sit bones to my collarbones to my left. I'm just going to sort of shimmy in my seat a little bit. And the way I'll know that that happened is my belly button is now facing off to the left a little bit, and my left shoulder just went back. Actually, my right knee just slid forward a little bit. That's how I know it really occurred all the way from my sit bones all the way up. It's like my whole upper body just rotated like a column, right? So I'm going to put the left hand up like I'm going to wave at you. And I'm going to cover it with the right. And now as I turn to the right, it's going to pull the hands along. It's going to be the same circle we just did, only smaller. Here we go. And back. Nice. And you might feel your pelvis kind of shimming from side to side very slowly. If you look down, you might even see one knee gliding forward and then the other. 
because that's what happens when the pelvis kind of rotates from side to side in your chair. Nice. But the head stays forward. This is one reason why Tai Chi Cha is really so good for balance. The head and eyes stay forward and the body kind of does its thing under the head. That's an old dancing trick, you know. Last one and rest. Just feel your body not moving for a moment. And then we move. Let's do push pull. I'll stay seated for this one, okay? And then I'll stand for the other. So we're going to start with the left foot out, and the hands are going to come up to the shoulders. And then as you let your pelvis kind of spill forward, the hands roll out. And as you let the pelvis kind of spill back, they come back. Yeah. It's kind of like I'm pushing my good energy out towards you, and then I'm pulling your energy back to me. A nice exchange of beautiful positive energy here. Nice. I'm going to do one more. And then rest. And then move. Let's pretend I've been standing all along. How about that? Here we are. Sinking and shifting to the left so my empty right leg can extend. And here come the hands. And here we go. You probably notice I'm still drawing circles in the air with my hands. It's a, just a slightly mushed circle now. It's more like an ellipse. Last one. Soles of the feet. Or if you're seated, bones of the seat. <laughs> Feel your body resting for a moment. Okay, we're going to do pulling in the energy. Since I'm already standing, I'll just do it from here. We're sinking and shifting to the right so the empty left leg can extend. Look at that open rest again. It's just like around the platter, only the hands are under it now. Same movement. <sighs> Let's do one more. Resting. I do the other one seated from an angle. Other side, I should say. Placing the right foot out ever so slightly. This movement is really interesting. It's the only one we have with a guided visualization that goes along with it. So we say, imagine the energy from the most distant star flowing into your body through each one of your fingertips. And it's really a unique experience to be doing it outside in the day like this because my hands are moving in and out of the sunlight. And I can actually feel the sun, the heat from the sun on my hands sometimes, and then it goes away. How often in life do you feel those sensations? Right? I think this is number six. We're going to call it six. And rest. Nice. Now we're going to do a whole bunch of movements that are all based on a particular movement pattern called pulling taffy. I think I'm going to do the first couple from my chair. Okay. Because I do I think it might be easier seated. Okay. So all we're going to do is um, turn the bot, rotate 
rotate the entire upper body the same way we did when we carried the ball to the side. Okay, so let's rotate the, I'm sorry, I'm not, I didn't mean to mirror you by mistake. Let's rotate the whole body to your right. Okay, there we go. The whole upper body just went to the right. So my belly button is now sort of facing off at a right, a rightish angle, like a 45-ish degree right angle. And my right shoulder just went back. Okay. But my left shoulder just went forward. So that's sending a signal down this arm. It's telling this arm to do that. All right. And the other arm just sort of flows up on top. And then as you turn to your left, the hands separate. And then as you come back to the middle, they rest. I'm going to do that again on the other side. I'm turning. I'm orienting the lower hand here. I'm turning. And I'm coming back to rest. Let's do that again. Good. And here we go over here. Nice. Now I'm going to do at least one set, maybe two, standing. Because once we get this movement pattern, once we understand how it works, you pretty much know how to do all the other variations of pulling tappy. There's three more variations. Okay, so here we are standing. Both our feet on the ground in a comfortable V. Right? I'm going to rotate a little bit so that my leg doesn't hit the bench there. Good. So we're going to begin just the way we set up the carry the ball to the side movement. We're going to sink down and shift to the right and rotate. That sort of all happens at once. And look how the left shoulder came forward again. So the left arm just does this. And then the right arm just sneaks up on top of it. And then the empty left heel just kind of moves out to the side. And then as we shift that direction, the hands separate. And then we just stand up on this full leg. And we rest. Good. Let's do the other side. This is me zipping it. Just copy what you see. It's going to be great. Here we go. Good. I'm going to do another one, another set. Good. Just feel your body resting for a minute. Not a minute, a moment. <laughs> And now we're going to move. Let's do anchor taffy. It's the first variation. Some people just call it anchor taffy. It's very similar to what we just did, only there's both a forward, back, and a side-to-side -side component to it. It's kind of like the cha-cha. You know, when you're doing the cha-cha, you go forward, back, and then side-to-side. -side, you know. So it's the tai chi cha-cha-cha is what we're going to do. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start the same way we just did. Only instead of to the side, the empty leg is going to go forward. And since your belly button is already sort of turned to, you know, a 45-ish right angle, so is your front toe. It's almost pigeon-toed, actually, right? And then you're just going to leave it there as you shift forward. And then just come back again and rest. I think that sort of angular front toe keeps you from shifting so far forward that you can't get right back again, I think. I don't know. We never really know the answers to a lot of these questions. And the originator, Justin Stone, died a few years ago. So, and, you know, frankly, he didn't always answer questions anyway. He was like a Zen master in many ways. You would ask him, Justin, why do we always have the left hand closer to the heart when we do Daughter on the Mountaintop? And he'd say something like, why does the human favorite thing, why does the human hand have five fingers and like leave the room? What's the sound of one hand clapping? So now we're going to go to the side. I'm going to do the forward movement again because I'm an over-talker. I should just form an organization called Over-Talkers Anonymous and be done with it. It'd be me and Bill Wilson that will change the world, right?
And we're going to go forward and back. And we're going to go to the side. I'm going to do one more set standing and then I'm going to do a seated one. I want us to be able to get through all these movements today. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping we do. But if we don't, that's okay. Because again, the research shows you only need about 15 minutes of this stuff a day in order to literally learn to be well. Train your well-being. But the real beauty of the fact that we have these moments of motionlessness in between the moves is if you don't remember all the moves, or if, God forbid, I don't get a chance to teach them all to you, just do the ones you know or the ones you like. That's good enough. And because you, of all those little motionless moments in between, you can mix and match the order. You don't have to do it in this order. I'm going to do it seated. Same movement pattern, anchor taffy. Okay, so here we go. A little forward and back. And now a little bit to the side and back. Okay. A little forward and back. And now a little bit to the side and back. Good. Good, good. Now we're going to do a second variation on this movement pattern called wrist circles taffy i'm turning so that these this part of the bench is parallel to me because otherwise i won't be able to do the movement okay so here's what we're going to do we're just going to let the pelvis kind of roll back a little bit and the hands are just going to drip off the legs and then as we come forward again the fingertips are going to follow suit we're going to do that a couple times and on the third one, the fingers are going to lift, and then we're just going to pull taffy. Good. And now again. And I'm going to do that same movement pattern standing. I'm going to do a little bit sideways so you can sort of see a different view. Sinking. Rising. I'm really just shifting back and shifting forward. The rising just sort of happens naturally. I hope you can see my belly turning a little bit, too. Right now it's just coming down and up and forward and back but now i'm turning to my left and then i'm turning to my right and then i come back to center now i'm going to do one more set standing And rest. Feel your body not moving for a moment or two. And now we're going to do the third variation of pulling taffy. Many people just call it perpetual motion. Um, I'm going to do it a couple of uh, repetitions with just one arm. Because the only difference is you're going to turn ever so slightly farther in each direction so that the trailing heel will literally peel itself off the ground for a moment and then you just put it right back down and shift back that way. So here's what it looks like one hand at a time while standing. Okay, so here we go. Very easy, right? Now I'm going to add the second arm. And look, right here, they just sort of, the hands just switch places in the middle. 
they separate and then just slide right back together again. And do one more set like this. And then I'm going to do three sets seated. It's still exceedingly easy to do. So we're, it's just going to be smaller than the standing move. And you're just going to pay closer attention to the rotating of the belly or the rotation of the whole upper body, really. And that will cause the shoulders to rotate. So whichever shoulder is out in front, that's the hand that goes under. And then they switch. Right? So it's like this, and on this side it's like this. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to do the last set one hand at a time. And then I'll go back to two-handed. And flowing back to rest. Feel the body not moving for just a moment or two. All right, we're going to do this next movement. I'll do one side, I'll do standing, the other side, I'll do seated, okay? It's called work in the pulley. It's probably easier for you to see what's going on if I turn a little bit sideways to you, okay? So here we are, just resting. We're going to start with the left foot out, like we do most of the forward back moves, okay? Actually, all of them. Okay? Here we go. We sink down and shift over to the right so the left leg can extend effortlessly. And because the left leg is out there, the left hand goes up to the shoulder and the right hand just turns over. So you probably already figured out, we're going to let all the weight that's in your right leg right now flow into your left. And this hand's going to come forward at the same time. But here's the trick. We're going to actually let the upper body kind of turn away from the forward reaching hand. You see how that is happening? You can see my back becoming more exposed to you. And what's also happening, watch this elbow. As I turn away from the hand that's reaching forward, you see how this elbow is moving behind me. So if I just let it go a little bit further, then the hands can simply change places. And then when I come back again, you see it? If you turn away from the hand that's moving forward, the rear moving elbow will move behind you quite effortlessly. And then the hands just switch places. The one that was down comes up, and the one that was up goes down. Let's do it together. Flow with me. Let's do one more. Now, in reality, that's a pretty complex move, but many people find it very easy um, because it's kind of like swimming. You know, a lot of people just sort of naturally know how to do the Australian crawl, you know, but the difference is when you're swimming, you're slicing through the water with hands like a knife, right? So with this, it's really more like you're letting your arms and hands move through the air as if the air is, is really thick. And it's causing ever so slightly a little resistance there. And your hands are just so relaxed. They're pretty much in the same open position they would be in if you were letting your hands, you know, be sort of pushed through the water rather than slicing through it. Anyway, let's do it together seated, okay? All right. So just place your right foot out ever so slightly. It's mostly a placeholder, right? And that causes you to remember to put your right hand up this time and the left hand is going to just turn towards the sky. So as your belly turns a little bit to your left, this right hand is going to come forward, and that's going to allow your left elbow to get behind you. All right, here we go. And 
and you can probably see how it would be easier for me to do this if I wasn't sitting on a bench because the back of the bench is getting in the way of my right hand. But you know, again, remember, Tai Chi Cha is the most adaptive Tai Chi practice around. So if you can't move your body exactly the way I'm telling you to, so what? <laughs> Just do the best you can with the effort of no effort and all will be well. And we're going to call this next one six. And to end it, we're just going to wait till we're sort of in the middle and then just rest. Nice. Let's do light at the top of the head, light of the temple. It's the next move. And I'll do the first. It's in two parts, actually. I'll do the first part seated. I'll do the second part standing. Okay. So all we do is that same sort of up and down thing we did for wrist circle taffy. Okay. And again, the, the bench is a little bit on in the way on my right hand, but you'll be able to see what's going on with my left. So here we go. We're going to sort of sink down and let the momentum of you rising and expanding sort of send your hands up to the top of your head. But if this hurts, this is fine. You're going to bring your hands together kind of like they were when you were doing uh, bird flaps and swings, only now they're up here. And here we go. We're going to contract. And then as we expand, so do the hands, like windshield wipers. And again, now with you in neutral, it's like you're going to pull your energy up and out of the crown of your head and kind of mix it with the cosmic soup. You're letting your hands kind of glide by each other for about six seconds. And then you hold and just let your energy settle down here again for about six seconds. And then we contract and expand and contract and expand and contract and shift and here we are resting that was part one so here's part two up to the temples and we will sink and rise and sink and rise and sink and rise. Now mix forward. And hold. Sink, rise. Sink, rise. Sink and circle. Now let's do joyous breath. I'll do, uh, it, we usually do three repetitions, so I'll do one standing, maybe two standing, because they're very powerful, and one seated, okay? So we're gonna step out with the left leg again, really the same way we did for rocking motion. And here we are, we're gonna sink down. We're gonna actually use a special breath. You're gonna drop your jaw down, but keep your lips closed. It's almost like uh, what you would do if you wanted to clean your glasses, you go like this. <sighs> and then you wipe them, but your lips will be closed. So you're gonna hear the sound in the back of your throat, kind of like the same sound you would hear if you held a shell up to your ear, right? So here we go. And just inhale, come to the front of your feet, let your hands come up to the shoulders and turn over. And now we're gonna use that special breath as we press down in sort of four chunks. Let's do it again. And pretend I was sitting the whole time. Good. Same move, just smaller. <sighs> Feel your body rest. All right, now we're going to do passing clouds. This is such a cool movement. Either seated or standing, it's just cool. And it's really recognizable, too. Almost everybody knows 
that this is every Tai Chi practice has some version of this particular movement pattern and almost everybody knows it's something related to clouds uh, waving hands like clouds cloud hands passing clouds they're all they're very very similar okay so same movement pattern when you're sitting you're just the upper body from the sit bones to the collarbones are rotating the whole upper body's rotating from side to side but we're going to start with a rotation to your left and the left hand goes up like you're high-fiving a wall over there and the right hand is just going to rest here until it has something else to do but by the way this is exactly the same movement as carry the ball to the side only the hands move independently now okay so here we go nice Can you see if we were doing carry the ball to the side, it would be the same? Right. So here we go. Passing cloud. We're going to do one more seated. And rest just a moment. Because I have to show you what it looks like standing. It's gorgeous. It's a really profound movement. I, everybody loves passing cloud. Okay, so here we go. We're sinking and shifting and sort of turning the belly to the left. That's why the left hand goes up. The empty leg is the right. Is, the right one is the empty leg, so that's why it goes out to the side. And here we go. I might be looking like I'm rising as I move to the right, but it's only because the ground goes uphill over there. And flow back to rest. Now, since I'm standing, I'm going to uh, do part of the last uh, moving move, <laughs> uh, standing, and then I'll do it seated. This one's called Six Healing Sounds. Gosh, I could talk a whole hour on Six Healing Sounds, but I got five minutes, so I'm not even going to give you the history. Just copy me, okay? I'll just do the sounds. You just listen copy the movements all is going to be well okay so we're going to begin with the left hand it's in many ways it's like um anchor taffy because there's a forward back and a side to side aspect to it okay we're going to begin with the left hand the left leg going forward and then both hands and then we're going to sweep to your left and now the empty right foot goes forward along with the right hand. Now both hands. And we're going to sweep back to your right. I'm going to do one more set like that, then I'm going to sit. Okay, I'm going to do it seated now. Here we go. There's no footwork involved. And now there's these perpetual sweeping trees. Last one. And Now, the 20th movement of Tai Chi Cha is not a movement. It's a pose. It's called Cosmic Consciousness Pose. I'll do it standing because it, it, it just looks very different when you're seated. So we're just resting here. And without shifting your weight, if you can, it's very, actually very simple. You're just going to lift your left heel ever so slightly and kind of rotate it a little bit and drop it down on your right ankle. You see, I didn't even move, right, anything but my heel. And then the hands come up to about shoulder height. Uh, the fingertips overlap, and actually the left ones are the ones that are closer to your body again. And we're just going to hang out here for a few moments. Just feeling your body being still. If you're seated, it just looks like this. And then let's flow back to rest. 
And let's do a few more minutes of good old fashioned mindfulness now. Either if you're standing, just go ahead and put yourself in the gentle rest position you now know pretty darn well, I'm sure. If you're seated, just sit here, right? Now, I want us all to find a spot of our choice, this individual here, somewhere south of the belly button to focus on more exclusively than the rest of your body, okay? Pick your spot. I've picked mine. I'm actually going to focus on my sit bones, touching the bench. Okay, with your mind's eye, right? I'm going to call the bell. Again, that's the fancy Buddhist way of saying I'm going to ring it. And your whole job till I call you back is just to look at mentally this spot you've chosen. And if your mind wanders, congratulations. It means you are a human being, a living, breathing human being. <laughs> that's what minds do. And it's okay. Just don't follow the thought. Thank you for sharing. Invite it back to the place you'd rather it attend to. And that's just fine. There's no wrong way to do this. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Well, what was going on in there? Could you feel yourself a little physically and mentally quieter than when we began? I know I could. And people ask me all the time, why do you teach this? I'm like, because, oh my gosh, it's the most amazing thing. I love it so much. I just want to do it more and more and more. And, and teaching it is a great way to do it more and more and more. <laughs> anyway, I'm Jessica Lewis. I'm very, very happy to be here at least a couple times a month at the Cancer Support Community. We're going to be here. Uh, the second and fourth Tuesday, uh, Wednesdays of October. So I'll see you then at noon, and I look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Bye-bye.